Hey, what's up, fellas? It's uh, a bit after 10 o'clock um, out here in the backyard. I just got uh, uh, some news from uh, some of my guys that are uh, merchant marines. Uh, I'll show you the Franklin Mountains. It's very quiet back here, just the birds and uh, people. No, people, not people. The um, sprinklers are going off. I'm going to title this video The Difference Between Macro and Micro uh, Issues. And I want you guys to not worry so much about, and these are uh, geopolitical things. And my, my most favorite human being for geopolitical things is uh, Peter Zeehan. And I will uh, put a link to his stuff in there. All right. I don't want you guys to think that I'm trying to sell you anything. I'm not selling anything to anybody. For any reason, I don't want to try to take advantage of anybody because I remember what that fucking felt like when you realize um, you think somebody's out there just trying to be a decent human being to you. Yeah, my hair's a little fucked up. I don't care. And you find out that they're just trying to make a buck off of you. Any would they'll say anything or do anything. That's not me. I'm not going to be a fucking scumbag. I used to be a fucking scumbag a long time ago, about 30, 35 years ago. I used to be a fucking scumbag. I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, the military changed that for me. So let's just move on. All right. One of the things that this guy, Peter Zehein, talked on, and it's P-E-T-E-R-Z-E-I-H-A-N. And he talks about things on a macro scale. Then he talks about how uh, the United States used its deep water blue navy to protect shipping all over the planet to make sure that people could become industrialized. And, I, and I'm not going to weigh into this too much. Um, about six to eight months ago, he started talking about the, uh, the United States decided that we're not going to be the world police anymore. And we're not going to make sure that the goods you ship from point A to point B aren't going to be, aren't, aren't going to be protected. Uh, we're not going to foot the bill as United States Americans for the rest of the shipping across the world. Now, how the navies in the world are listed is the United States has the largest, most potent deep water blue navy. Number two is actually Japan. And number three is the United Kingdom. And all three of us get along real well together. But we're not going to foot the bill for the rest of the world's bullshit anymore. We're not going to risk our lives, the lives of our people or the rest of that, so that you can get cheap oil and the rest of that. All right, let me move on. In the last 60 days, as a test, two of them, one of the tankers is a U.S. tanker, is a U.S. seized tanker. And the last two, including today, is Iran. And now, if you don't know, if you can look geopolitically where Iran is stationed, they can use really cheap, a bunch of cheap little boats like a, um, I don't know what they call them, to... Uh, Take tankers. Well, they took another tanker. This is the second tanker. The first tanker they took was an 800,000 gallon tanker headed for China, loaded. I think that's the second tanker they seized today or yesterday is another massive tanker. But the U.S. isn't going to go in there anymore and tell them, hey, you got to give that back or we're going to kick your ass. And Iran's like, well, you know what? Iran keeps, I, I don't know if you've ever dealt with uh, somebody who's kind of a dick, you say, hey, this is a line, don't cross it. And they just go just a little bit further <laughs> to see if you're going to... We're not doing that anymore. The U.S. is not going to be the world police. And uh, people who... The global economy is going to collapse here pretty soon. Germany can't survive without a lot of outside input. Um, a lot of Europe, a lot of Africa, a lot of China. And it, I know, and I'm not being high-headed or arrogant about the United States, but we have uh, 
a psychopath above us in uh, Canada, but the other provinces, the other seven provinces, we don't have to worry a lot about Canada and Mexico is, they're, they're good. Central and South America, we have to weed out a couple of people, a couple of them. Ah, let me shut the fuck up and get to the point. You're going to see in the near term, mid term, and long term future that countries that used to completely depend on using the United States for free, our Navy, our soldiers, I went and fought in the Middle East. Anyways, I was just fought. I have no problem. I will go to war for anybody who comes to try to get us where we live. And if they attack us and we can go over there and stomp on them, then that's what we're going to do. Um, but we're not going to be the world cops anymore. And it's starting to show. I ask you, and I'm just asking you, to consider taking a look at a guy by the name of Peter Z. P-E-T-E-R-Z-E-I-H-A-N. Uh, and I'll put a link to his... Uh, YouTube show. He has a newsletter that's free. He doesn't charge anything like that. He's not a guy who's trying to uh, bait and switch you. Uh, I'm not telling you you have to do this. I'm not doing anything like that. But I'd like you to consider uh, macro issues as well as micro issues. And you're going to figure out that the next five, I'd say five to seven or eight years, you're going to watch a lot of countries like China, Russia, parts of Europe, parts of Africa are just going to collapse. And it's demographic. He, he can tell you the story way better than I can. Love you guys. I'm just trying to help you. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. You don't owe me anything. In fact, I owe you and I'm just trying to point you in the right direction. And I believe that good, honest, objective information is much more of a help to you than it is a detriment. All right. So I'll put a link in the description. You stay safe and healthy. Take care of each other if you can. And if you can't, you have to take care of yourselves. Uh, the book I have is The End of the World is Just the Beginning. It's by Peter Zian. And it is a remarkable book. You don't have to buy it. He'll tell you everything <laughs> you want to know about him and what's going to happen. And by the way, he was the only guy that predicted the invasion of Russia into the Crimea back before 2004. Just about. And on top of that, he's a hippie. He's long haired. He's. He's just a hippie. I love him. Um, I respect him. Uh, I want him to be successful. And here's the other thing. You don't owe me or anybody else anything. As a man, you are the most valuable thing we have on the planet because you're willing to do things that other people aren't willing to do. Love you. I'll do what I can to help you. Like a fork and a G-string from West Texas, El Paso. I'm out of here. Bye. I, you know, I'll probably uh, title this something about uh, geopolitical things. You know what? Better yet macro and micro uh, political, geopolitical things. It's important that you realize what's going on around you and what they're going to do in our near term future, which you can take advantage of, is they're going to do what is called reshoring, bring the manufacturing away from China and the rest of those places. Now, they may leave some of it in Vietnam. Anyways. Stay, nah, I'm out of here. Bye-bye. I'm going to try to get the button the first time, all right?